Hey guys, welcome back. Now you'll notice I've been doing a lot of truck repair videos. Hopefully that's not too boring for everybody. I'm just trying to get this, this truck whipped into shape. Uh, but I'll give you a little spoiler. I do have all the paperwork in order. And as of yesterday, this truck is legal to drive. So future videos will involve the rollback truck in action. Now what you heard at the beginning of the video was the air dryer on the rollback truck purging and you saw I timed it, it's basically purging every 30 seconds and that is not right. The way the system is supposed to work is uh, the compressor is supposed to build pressure to about 120 psi and then the governor here is going to shift and unload the compressor and purge the air dryer and then basically nothing should happen until the system pressure drops back down below 90 psi and it's definitely not doing that so something is wrong with the the unloader circuit so this is a schematic printout basically of how the air brake system works so there's a compressor, a governor, a dryer and then an air tank there's actually multiple air tanks but they just show it as one and Unlike your shop air compressor that has an electric motor, the air compressor on the truck is geared right to the engine. So anytime the engine is running, the air compressor is turning. So when the, when the system does not need more air pressure, it unloads the compressor. So it basically just holds the valves open so the piston can come up and down, but it doesn't create more pressure. And the way it's controlled is through the governor. And I've actually got one right here. This is an old one. It's a standard Haldex part. Um, it's just got a couple of ports. And then inside here is a, a, a spool, basically, or a, a shuttle valve and some springs that are controlled by the these adjustment nuts here. That's how you control your cutout, cut-in pressure. And basically what happens is when it gets to like 120 PSI, the valve shuttles over, puts air pressure to the unloader port, and then when it gets down below, cut in pressure the shuttle valve goes the other way and takes the air away anyway what is most likely happening is that there's a leak either in this airline in the purge valve in the governor itself or in the actual unloader valve in the compressor and I don't know which one is the culprit but we're gonna do some testing and find out alright here's the governor on top of the air compressor right here so I'm just gonna Spray it with some soapy water and make sure there's no obvious air leaks. I don't see anything. Well, this line here is the tank pressure line. So right now it's about 120 PSI. We don't want to pull that one off unless we remove the pressure from the tanks. And then this one is the unloader right here. There shouldn't be any pressure there unless the governor is actually unloaded. Here's the test rig for the air leak. It's basically just a gauge and a T with a ball valve so I can supply shop air into this hose into the governor and then we'll close the valve and see if the, the pressure drops and that'll tell us whether we have a leak in the governor or the compressor and then we'll check the purge valve next. Yeah, so far that looks fine. This governor looks like it's brand new, so I don't think we're going to find the problem here. We'll, we'll let this sit for a minute and keep an eye on it. Okay, same test, but this time I'm teed into the actual air line that runs down to the air dryer purge valve. So we should hear the purge valve. There it was. This is the air dryer. It's a Bendix 89. That's the most common one that you'll see here in America. And this is your unload line here. This is out to the reservoir tank. There's an input line 
here where the check valve and then this thing right here is a heater to keep the purge valve from freezing up because it's actually blowing out you know water along with the air so they heat it in the winter time to keep it from freezing up but we need to check this port right here okay I've got my test rig set up here on the actual purge valve itself so let's apply some air okay so you didn't actually hear it purge because there's no pressure behind the valve but I'm just gonna watch this unload circuit and see if the pressure stays the same All right, it's been it's been about two minutes now and it's now down below 90 psi so I think we found our culprit now I actually tested this from the top side too because I wanted to rule out the actual line itself and I don't think the line is leaking I think it's the purge valve so I might as well yank the purge valve out and get a rebuild kit for it I went ahead and drained the air out of the tanks. There should be a check valve, so there shouldn't be any air behind it, but just in case. There it is. All right, I took the plunger out of the purge valve, and when you go to buy the rebuild kit, they're going to ask you if you have a soft seat or a hard seat, and that's this surface right here, which seats down against that angled surface, the shiny one at the bottom and you can see this one has a hard seat that's the most common I'm not sure I've ever run into a soft seat honestly but uh, I know that there is a soft seat option so just something to be aware of and I'll clean this up and we'll we'll throw a rebuild kit in it and uh, hope for the best I have stripped down the purge valve and cleaned it up in the solvent tank and I'm ready to go ahead and install the new rebuild kit there's the part number right there and you see on this plunger it has the hard seat. I installed the rebuilt purge valve in the air dryer and tested it and it still pretty much does the same thing. It still purges every 30 seconds or so. So we know that the purge valve was leaking, the test showed that, but it must not have been the, the largest contributing factor to why the, the air dryer was cycling all the time. So what I did is I just I popped this supply line loose on the air compressor. So the air compressor is right here. This is the line that actually goes to the air dryer. And you hear that air escaping, that little hiss. So if we look at our schematic here, this discharge line is right here. It goes through the dryer and into this wet tank. And then the, the wet tank has a port that goes back to the governor. And the governor you know it has the spool in there that shuttles to unload the compressor so what happens if the check valve is bad in the in the air dryer then the pressure from this wet tank can basically bleed right back through the dryer and into the compressor and if the compressor is unloaded it can just go right back out to the atmosphere so that means that the, the wet tank pressure is going to drop pretty quickly now there's a check valve in this line too before the, the air goes back out to the to the actual air brake tanks so you, your your pressure gauge on your dash isn't going to change the the gauge doesn't actually measure the pressure in this wet tank but I should have checked that first and yeah what I suspect is happening is the check valves bad you can hear that hiss and it's just not maintaining enough pressure in the wet tank to keep the the governor unloaded so we'll get a new check valve and uh, we should be good to go Here's a new check valve for the air dryer and this is the part number from Haldex. They call it a check valve repair kit but all you do is take the old check valve out and put this check valve in and that fixes it. And then we're also going to install this new filter cartridge and you're supposed to service those, uh, I don't know, there's an interval. On a truck like this rollback that does a lot of city driving, a lot of brakes, once a year probably if you're driving over the road you know 
70 miles an hour all day. Probably get away with doing it every two years. It's not new, it's actually a remanufactured uh, filter. There's the part number right there. And then we'll send the old one back in as a core. And actually, you know, most shops I think probably would just replace the whole air dryer or throw a reman air dryer on. And, and that's fine to do. You know, by the time you figure in the labor to put all these parts in, it's probably about a wash. And, you know, where I live, the the end plates, the aluminum end plates, eventually get corroded. And then at that point, you might as well just throw on a new air dryer anyway. How often do you get to use an inch and five eighths wrench? <laughs> I know, I know. Use an adjustable. Where's the fun in that? See that? There's your problem. I guarantee I could just put that back in and it would work. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we got a new one. Might as well put it in. Okay, this air dryer is done and ready to go back on the truck. Just to review, we have rebuilt the purge valve, we replaced the check valve, and we have replaced the desiccant filter cartridge and we'll send the old cartridge back as a core and put this back on the truck and it should be good to go. Okay folks, I think we got this problem whipped. I reset the adjustment on the air governor so that it cuts out at about 125 PSI and cuts in again at about 90 PSI and the air dryer purges and you don't hear it again until the cycle starts over. That's exactly what it should do. So in the end, probably that purge valve didn't need to be rebuilt I know, I know it was leaking, but that was probably within the spec. So the, the big problem was that big chunk of, of junk caught in the check valve. And I'm sure that we could have just taken that, cleaned it, and put it back in and it would have worked. But I already bought a new one, so we might as well use it. So there we go. Thanks for watching.